Okay, so welcome back, you guys. I'm so excited today because today is the day that we're finally going to finish our review for that TSI2 math section practice test that we've been working on. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Miss Amber. I'm making videos to help students pass the TSI A2 math section on their entrance exams. So if you are interested in joining the team, joining the crew, please hit that subscribe button and you can always go back to previous videos to follow up on the problems that you may have missed. But I just need you guys to know that I'm here for you. I wanna help you guys as much as I possibly can. So if while watching this video, you have questions that pop up, please comment below the questions that you have. If you have any specific problems that you would like me to break down and make a video for, just shoot them to my email, amberray50 at gmail.com. And please don't forget to subscribe and join the crew. So we're gonna go ahead and start with problem number 17. It says, in the xy plane, what is the y-intercept of the graph of the equation y is equal to 6 times x minus 1 half times x plus 3? So it's always good to remember that anytime we're talking about y-intercept, it's just a point that's on the graph. It's a point that goes through the y-axis, and the point is always written with 0 as the x, and then the y is always a value. So sometimes it will be like 0, 2, 0, 5. That 2 is the y-intercept. That phi is, 5 is that y-intercept. So when we have an equation, y is equal to 6, x minus 1 half, x plus 3, and they want you to find the y-intercept, you just insert 0 for the x. It's much simpler than it seems. So let's just go ahead, and every time we see an x, we're going to write 0. All right. So... It looks much simpler now that there's zeros instead of x's. So let's go ahead and just solve this. So 0 minus 1 half is just negative 1 half. We're going to bring down that 6. And 0 plus 3 is 3. So now 6 times negative 1 half. Anytime you're multiplying by half, you're just dividing by 2. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. But again, it's a negative. So it will be negative 3 times 3. If you're unsure how I did that, you can also just multiply it out. 6 over 1 times negative 1 over 2. Multiply the numerators, that's negative 6 over 2. And then that would be negative 3. So we go back to our equation. y is equal to negative 3 times 3. So y would be equal to negative 9. So negative 9 is our y-intercept. So what did we learn from this problem? Just any time you're trying to find the y-intercept and they give you an equation, just insert 0 for the x, and then you'll be able to figure out what y is equal to. It's much more simple than they try to make it seem. All right, so question number 18. So you may be thinking, Miss Amber, we saw this problem already. You actually did this problem in another one of your videos. Um, yes, I did help you guys do this problem in another one of my videos, but the way that I showed you guys how to do this, I just told you to make an equation and then put the answer choices into that equation and see what answer works out. That is definitely a solution, but I thought, why not I show you guys a little bit longer version of this problem so that you guys can be familiar with it so that you can do it both ways. So it says the area of the triangle above is 21. What is the value of x? So we're just going to write down what we know about the area of a triangle. Area equals one-half base times height. All right, so the base is just the bottom of the figure. So the bottom of the figure is x plus, two, x plus 1. So its area equals one-half times, I'm going to put in parentheses, x plus 1 times the height. And the height just goes from the top of the figure to the bottom. So then the height is just x. So now we already know that the area is 21. So we're going to put 21 for A is equal to 1 half times X plus 1 times X. So let's take care of the right side of this equation. So we're going to distribute the 1 half times X and then 1 half times 1. So 1 half times X is 1 half X. 1 half times 1 is 1 half. And then we're going to put that in a parentheses because we need to multiply all that out 
by that x. So let's go ahead and distribute this x. x times 1 half x is going to be 1 half x squared. x times 1 half would be plus 1 half x. And we're going to bring equals 21 down. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring the 21 to the other side. So we're going to minus 21 from both sides. And now we have 0 equals 1 half x squared plus 1 half x minus 21. I'm going to show you guys how to get rid of that fraction because I don't like working with fractions. I find them to be more difficult. So I like to get rid of the fractions if possible. The easiest way to get rid of fractions in an equation is to figure out what the denominator of the fraction is, which is 2, and to divide, to multiply, I'm sorry, multiply both sides of the equation by 2, or by that denominator. 2 times 0 is 0, and then 2 times 1 half, it eliminates, it cancels each other out, and you're just left with 1x squared, or just x squared. 2 times 1 half, again, they cancel each other out, and you're just left with plus x or 1x and then 2 times negative 21 which is negative 42. So I was able to eliminate all the fractions by multiplying both sides of the equation by the denominator which was 2. Now I'm going to bring this equation over here. So now I have x squared plus 1x minus 42. So now we're going to go ahead and try to break this down to see if we can make this into two binomials. And so you should be familiar with breaking it down into two binomials, but I'm going to show you how that can be done. So I'm going to make two binomials. x squared can be broken down by x and x. Remember, in order to break it down into two binomials, you need to figure out a num you got to find two numbers that when you multiply, it equals the last number. So it's going to equal negative 42. But when you add those same two numbers together, they're going to equal positive 1, that middle number. So I'm going to say, okay, negative 6 and positive 7 equals 42. And negative 6 and positive 7 add to positive 1. So negative 6 and positive 7 are the two numbers that go inside that binomial. So now I'm just going to set them equal to 0, both of them. And I'm going to solve for x. So we're going to add 6 to both sides. x is equal to positive 6. And then I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. x is equal to negative 7. So with this um, expression, x is either going to be equal to 6 or x is going to be equal to negative 7. But we need to go back to our problem and say x represents height. Can the height of something be negative 7 inches, negative 7 feet? No. Okay, well, can the height of something be positive 6? Yes, it can. So our answer is going to be B. So again, you guys, I went over this problem in another video. I showed you the simple way of just writing this equation and then plugging in the answers into each one of like each one of those answers into the equation to find out which one just makes the equation true. But this is just the longer extended version so that you can get familiar with this way. There are some students who are at a more advanced level, and so this question made more sense to them doing it this way. Whichever way you feel more comfortable, do it that way. The goal is just to pass you guys. Do it, do the problem however it makes sense to you. So let's go ahead and go on to our next problem, which is problem number 19. Again, you guys, if you have any questions for me, please just comment below underneath my video and say, wait a minute, Miss Amber, that question made no sense to me. What do you mean separate into binomials? What do you mean about this? Just comment below and let me know, you guys. All right, so question number 19. It says, for which of the following values of x is the function f of x is equal to the square root of 4 minus x squared, not defined as a real number? So this question can seem real heavy, but it's not as complicated as it seems. And I want to keep telling you guys that because the way math is invented, it's invented to look scary. They want you to look at a problem, get intimidated by it, and then give up. But we're not quitters. We're not going to do that. We're going to know what to do. We're going to prepare and we're going to practice. So not defined as a real number. What is a real number? 
Well, a real number is any number that is just a regular number, one, two, three, four, five, or negative one, two, three, four, five. It's a number that can be written in a fraction form, and it's a number that can be written as a decimal. Either the decimal goes on forever or the decimal repeats itself. Well, what is not a real number? In this case, they want you, if you end up getting a negative number underneath the square root, then it's not a real number. So what do we have to do in this instance? This, we have to just plug in every one of those problem, every one of those answers into the equation to see which one leaves us with a negative number underneath the square root. So there's no other way around this, not that I know of. If you guys know of a way, please let me know. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. F of X is equal to the square root of four minus X squared. So we're gonna do F of X and we're gonna put negative two there. So it's equal to four minus negative two squared. Negative two times negative two is four. So it will be four minus four. Four minus four is zero. The square root of zero is just zero. And again, this isn't a negative zero, so we're good. So we know that A is real. Let's go ahead and do it again, but for B, F of X square root of four minus X squared. So F of zero is equal to four minus zero squared. So zero squared is just zero, four minus zero is just four. So it'll be the square root of four, which is equal to two. And again, the square root of four, that's a positive number. So this is also real. Let's go ahead and do that with C. F of X is equal to the square root of four minus X squared. We're gonna go ahead and put in two equals the square root of four minus two squared. Two squared is four, four minus four. Again, that is equal to the square root of zero. It's not a negative number, so this is also real. So I'm assuming the four is gonna be not real, but always, always test it out. Don't just assume because you may have done something wrong in the other problems. So test each one of the answers out. So four minus four squared. So it would be equal to four times four is 16. So it'll be four minus 16. Four minus 16 is negative 12. And there we have it. We have a negative number under the square root. So we know that that, that is not a real number. So our answer is D. Let's go ahead and go on to our last problem, you guys. Before I start this last problem, I just want to give you guys a heads up. This problem was difficult for me when I was reading it, when I was doing it. I am going to do my best to explain this to you guys as best as I can. I am not a perfect tutor, but I do sincerely want to help you guys. I hope you guys are able to see that in my videos. So if I don't explain this as clearly as I want it to be, I apologize but I am gonna do my very, very best explaining this to you guys. So if you're patient with me and listen through this ex entire explanation, please comment below and say, Amber, <laughs> thank you for trying. So we're gonna go ahead and try to solve this problem together. So it says under ideal conditions, the population of a certain species doubles every nine years. If the population started with 100 individuals, which of the following expressions give the populations of the species t years after the population started, assuming that the population has been living under ideal conditions? That is a mouthful. It is. Let's try to break it down. A population starts at 100 people and it doubles after every nine years. So the first nine years, it starts at 100 and then it doubles and the population is now at 200. The second nine years, let's pretend, let's just keep, keep it going. You start at the new population, 200, it doubles, and you end up with 400. So right now, we have our base equation. Let's just start with 100 times two as our base, and we're gonna keep building, we're gonna keep it going, okay? So then we're gonna try to make an equation for time. Time is equal to nine, nine years, every nine years, times P. P just is gonna stand for a positive number. So for example, after the first nine years, we would just do nine times one. 
and that would represent the time that has gone by, which is nine years. Again, if we were to say, okay, t equals 9p, and we want to say the second nine years, we would do 9 times 2, p would be 2, and the amount of time that have passed would be a total of 18 years. So now we have our second equation, t is equal to 9p. So after 9p years, the population would be equal to this base equation, 100 times 2 to the power of p. Whatever number you put in for p, that is what you put in as the exponent. I'm going to show you how this works. Can we prove that this actually works? So let's take, for example, the second nine years. So we have our equation, nine. We're going to put in two because it's the second of the nine years. And so we know it's going to be after 18 years. So because we put in that two for p, we're going to put that two in for this new equation. It's going to be 100 times two to the square root of two. 100 times the square, two times square root of two is 100 times four. So the population would be 400. Look at that. The population is equal to 400. So we see that the equation that we made, 100 times 2p, works. We just proved that it works. I know we're doing a lot, but please just stick with me. We're literally just building equations. So now we know we have one equation that represents the amount of years that have gone by, and we have another equation that we can use to find the population. So we're just gonna try to combine those two equations. T equals 9P and 100 times two to the power of P. We're gonna somehow try to combine those two equations. What do I see that's the same in both equations? They both have a P. So let me see if I can use this equation to get P by itself, to see what P is equal to. If I wanna get P by itself in this equation, the nine is in its way, so I'm gonna divide both sides by nine, and I see that P is gonna be equal to T over nine. P is equal to T over nine. So instead of writing P in this equation over here, what can we write instead? We can write 100 times two to the T over ninth power. And that is going to be our answer. So our answer is going to be D. I know that was a lot. Please comment below what questions you have. It's not if you're gonna have questions. I know you're gonna have questions. Please comment below which questions you have for me. If you're finding my videos helpful, it would help me out a lot if you were to subscribe to my channel because the more subscribers I have, then I can get monetized. And if I get monetized, then I can continue making more videos for you guys. Also, subscribing can help you guys out because I upload videos two times a week, sometimes three times a week, and they're all associated with passing your TSI math test. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm not a perfect tutor, but I really care about you guys, and I hope you do well. And I just want to say to all the students who have been passing their TSI math test and have been commenting below, I read all your comments, and I'm so, so proud of you guys. I hope you have a great rest of your evening. Good night, and I'll see you guys next time in the next video. Bye.